So there's our definition for a fact, an observation that has been repeatedly confirmed. Let me give you an example and see if it makes sense to you. Take a look at this guy. He looks bored, so he's going to drop the ball. Can we all agree what's going to happen to the ball once he lets it go? Fantastic. We can all agree that we can do this over and over and over again. The ball is always going to fall to the ground. That is a fact. What are we going to call this fact? No, we're not. Wait, wait, what? Gravity is not a fact? Are we sure gravity happens? Don't we know how gravity works? Yeah, we know, but it's not a fact. Gravity is what we use to explain our observations. It's an explanation for why things fall. So gravity is not a fact. Gravity... That's right, gravity is a theory a well-supported explanation of our natural world. It's confusing, I know, because in real life, in your common everyday experience, theory is often misused. The word theory means the exact opposite of what it means in science. When you use the word theory, you oftentimes might use it as a guess, but it's not a guess. A theory is a well-supported explanation of the natural world. A theory is the best explanation we have so far to explain the natural world. The longer a theory has been around, the more support it has gained. Therefore, an even better explanation of the natural world. Some theories in science have gained so much support that they're oftentimes considered to be true. But we all know there is no ultimate truth in science because we always know there are better explanations out there as we learn more information. Let me give you a few more examples. Here's the observation or the fact that we can confirm over and over again. Light bends when it passes through a prism. If I take the prism away, it no longer bends. How do we explain that? It looks as if our sun moves across our sky, but that's just an illusion. In actuality, our Earth is rotating. How do we explain this? This is a cool one. Here, I've got some wires that are able to allow electricity to flow through them. I have a generator, and on the other end, I have a light bulb. Watch this. I generate electricity, the light bulb lights, and notice what happens to the compass. The explanation for this is a theory. You may hear some people say, well, that's only a theory. These people don't know what they're talking about. They don't even understand ninth grade science. A theory is the ultimate in science because it is well supported. Theories don't become facts. Facts support a theory. A theory is kind of the end result of what science does. Now, that is not to say that theories won't ever change. They do. They can become modified, as is true with everything in science. Fact, theory, law, hypothesis, everything is tentative in science. All of this, this chemistry, all this chemistry stuff is based on a theory. Theory helps explain what is going on in the natural world. This last example seems to be the most confusing. I'm not sure why. Let's take a look. So what we saw there were some shark's teeth embedded in some rock. Now I dug these rocks up uh, in the mountains above Bakersfield. That's right, in the mountains above Bakersfield, a desert area. Now. We can do this over and over and over again. We can confirm this observation, so I guess we'd call this a fact. In fact, we do call this a fact. This change in position of fossils is called... That's right, evolution is a fact. Now, evolution simply means a change over time. So yes, we observe changes over time for a lot of different things. The planet changes, life changes, the cosmos change, everything changes over time, so evolution is a fact. How do we explain why we find these changes in shark fossils over time? 
Well, we have a theory for that, and it's known as... So science explains with a theory. We have facts, observations we can use to help support the theory, but the explanation itself for all these facts and observations is the theory. It is not a guess. Which brings us to... Very good. The hypothesis, well, it's not really a guess. It's not even an educated guess, even though your textbook refers to it like that. I don't like that description. A hypothesis is going to be a testable, tentative explanation. So it's something we can actually test. Call it a guess if you want, but it's something that is testable. In your checks activity from the other day, you developed tentative explanations. These were hypotheses, and you were able to test those explanations by gathering more information. Either your explanation was supported or it was not supported. So a theory will use all of those supported hypotheses to explain the natural world. That's it.